Hi, this is Asa, and welcome to my audio experience. Remember, if the body can get sick, it can also get well. It's about thriving. It's about living the life you were designed to live. Now, remember, if you've been sick, been dealing with some kind of health challenge, been diagnosed with some kind of condition, and your doctor has given you maybe not the best prognosis, prognosis, guess what? You can make some radical changes in your lifestyle and get some amazing results. That's what we're here for. You don't have to stay where you are. You really can make a difference in your health and with your life. Donna in Dallas, Texas, send an email in. We'll kick off with that. She says, I have polyps in my colon. I recently had a colonoscopy and my doctor says that they're non-cancerous, but they have me concerned and I don't want them to turn into something later on or have more. What can I do when it comes down to the polyps? Again, remember, most of them are benign, which means that there's nothing really. They're non-cancerous. So that's the good news. The also good news in this is that if you really begin to work on your diet and focus on increasing your fiber intake, usually about 30 to 40 grams of fiber a day. And also eat more fruits and vegetables, eating the right kinds of foods, non-inflammatory based foods. That's another great way to go because the colon itself, again, the types of foods that we eat on a regular basis will determine the type of health we're going to have always. And think about the digestive tract as that first line of defense for the body all the way around. And any, you know, obviously with polyps, there could be some genetic markers with that, but very rare, more than anything, it's going to be our lifestyle choices. So getting the right kind of foods in on a regular basis, getting uh, the right type of nutrients in is going to be important. So just remember the rule of thumb, about 30 to 40 grams of fiber and make sure your carbohydrates are coming from vegetables for the most part, some fruits, and then lean quality protein sources, healthy fats, and that typically creates a nice balance that does well and drink plenty of water make sure you stay hydrated at least half your body weight in ounces of water every single day so if you weigh you know 150 pounds shoot for about 75 ounces of water a day that can make a big difference and don't forget probiotics getting that good bacteria in the digestive tract there's been so much research on that and what it will do to support the digestive tract it makes all the difference in the world. Triple eight two eight three seven two seven two. That's triple eight two eight three seventy two seventy two. Lines are open. You can give us a call or go to the website. Now remember if you're looking for a lifestyle provider, someone in your area that believes the same way we do, all this nutrition and lifestyle based care we talk about, go to the website. Our team members are always standing by to help you go to that next level with your health and with your life. Let's go to the phones and talk with John. Hi John. My uh, question is uh, what what would be good for uh, glaucoma and macular degeneration? All right, glaucoma and macular degeneration. Now, here's the deal. We're seeing a rise in both of those more than we ever have. And one of the big keys that we have to look at, especially when you're dealing with with glaucoma is on the preventative side, vitamin A. Vitamin A, you can find, of course, in plenty of cod liver oils loaded with vitamin A, your, your high-level Uh, Deep orange colored vegetables such as carrots and sweet potatoes, they're loaded with vitamin A as well. But vitamin A is a critical component for proper eye health and getting enough of it is extremely important to get the nutrients that you need to support your eyes. Beta carotene and all the different carotenes, alpha carotene. Then they also have xanthan and astaxanthin that are byproducts of, of the vitamin A and have done numerous studies have shown that they've been very helpful in supporting against macular degeneration and preventing uh, a lot of the tear down and breakdown within the eyes. So most ophthalmologists now and even the their academy and their associations are big fans. A lot of the research has been done now to support that and show that. So yeah, that's your that's your best way to go to protect the eyes. And a lot of studies now and research on it that can make a big difference. Triple eight two eight three seven two seven two. That's triple eight two eight three seventy two seventy two. You're listening to On Call Radio. Check us out on the web. If you haven't seen the app that's out, it's out. Go to the app store for the iPhone, iPad. And the app name is On Call Radio. You can check it out there. Listen to the show 24-7 until we go live the next day. It's a great way to catch anything that you may have missed on the previous day's show. We love it. And it's also got a cool little feature on there where you can actually ask a question and make that a part of the show. If you're hungry in a department store, your spending may be on the rise, they say. So remember, 
The way you feel about hunger will determine your spending habits. They say experiments suggest that hunger will push people into buying more than they would normally when they're full or includes non-food items. You know, it's funny because uh, I, I will never, uh, they always say don't ever go to the, the grocery store hungry. And if you've ever gone hungry because you've been in a hurry or whatever it is, you'll buy twice the amount of food that you normally would. You eat a big meal, go to the grocery store, <laughs> you'll, you'll buy about half of that. It's it's incredible. But the truth is that if they've, they've done studies, and of course our thoughts originate in hunger and food, and they've done numerous studies. That's why so much is done with uh, marketing with restaurants and food on billboards and magazines and all that because it it plays such a role within our, our basic instinct and desires. But they did all these different, they did the experiments and they found that our normal rational thinking would normally put limits on how we acquire things, meaning that we would think through it and, and have more of a, a rationale to why we spend our money. But when you're hungry, money just kind of goes out the window and you start buying on instinct and you'll buy twice the amount that you normally would. So when you go shopping, you eat a big meal before and you'll spend less money triple eight two eight three seven two seven two lines are open you can give us a call or go to the website you go to team lifestyle.com let's go to deborah hi deborah um i just want to tell you that i caught a cold about a month and a half ago and after catching that cold i lost my sense of smell and my mm. sense of smell have not returned and it's been about a month and a half now i wanted to get your advice on it well, when you lose your sense of smell, I mean, again, a lot of times it's lack of zinc in the body. Zinc is an, a real top mineral that we can easily become deficient in. So zinc is always an important one to keep on top of. Now, nuts and seeds are loaded with zinc. Also, red meat has plenty of zinc in it as well. But getting it from your diet is always the first choice. The more stressed out we are, the more we burn through our zinc mineral. And so we want to make sure that we get enough zinc in our diet on a regular basis uh, to do that. So it's always good. You can supplement with it. You don't want to do more than about 40 milligrams, 50 milligrams, because it's easy to create what we call a copper deficiency. Copper is actually um, a, something that we need in our diet, and we can actually start throwing those levels off if we take in too much zinc. So you got to be careful with that. But it's important to get enough of it, and getting enough of it on a regular basis is key. And if you lose your smell due to a cold, then a lot of times it could be a zinc deficiency. And another key is that if your your probiotics in the gut, the healthy bacteria, are not where they need to be, restoring those many times can help with the smell. And then lastly, when it comes down to losing your smell during a cold, sometimes the bacteria or the virus, whatever caused that, can attack the cranial nerve that affects smell. So sometimes it can take Want to turn back the clock 15 years and have more energy? This is Dr. Asa telling you to just breathe with LiveO2. LiveO2 delivers the right amount of oxygen we need for optimal health. Go to LiveO2.com. That's LiveO2.com. To find out more, connect with On Call Radio online at InShapeNetwork.com. So glad you've joined in to the show with us. We always love having you here. Make sure if you haven't seen the television show, check that out and get local listings. If you go to the website, you can find information for the television show and connect with us in that way. But it's it's great. It's going on every single day. It's just growing like wildfire around the country. We're able to help so many people now. And that is always a blessing in itself. So Americans aren't getting adequate levels of important nutrients like vitamin D, calcium, potassium, fiber, and iron. A new committee has found the consistent message they say 
with Americans who don't who want to eat right but are confused by constant changing recommendations. We're looking at sugar intake now, and here's the general message uh, from most governing bodies within the healthcare systems, from the dietitians and the physicians and all that. Here it is. Stop chugging sugary soda and munching on sweet treats. Cut back on red meats, butter, and other sources of saturated fat. Lay off the salt shaker. Eat plenty of fruits and veggies. And don't worry about having an egg for breakfast. Well, pretty much for the most part, that's okay. Although I'm not, I'm a big, if it's the right kind of red meat, if it's organic and grass fed, and also butter being the same, they're actually really good for you. Also, coconut oil being a saturated fat is fantastic for your health. But for the most part, that's the truth. And you want to keep it simple and you keep it down to the basics. It can make a real big difference in your health. But a lot hasn't really changed. I mean, we really are eating. The dietary guidelines are not being followed, I guess. We're eating so much salt, sugar, saturated fat, and we're increasing the risk for chronic and deadly illnesses, and we're just not getting there. So even as much as we're teaching, we've got to get to a place where we're really making an impact and making a difference. So foods like uh, you know, your fast food burgers and tacos and pizza are about 44% of Americans' sodium intake now in most of their diet. Sugary soft drinks are a major source of providing about 47% of Americans added sugars to our diet. So just giving up sodas, juices, and sugary drinks can make a big difference in your overall health just with that alone. But people's diets, I say, include less sugar now than they did about a decade ago. So that's good. It is getting better, but we have to really take it up a notch. And for our kids, too, because our kids are seeing the different ways that we eat. And of course, they're going to follow right in kind. So we can't tell our kids not to eat sugar while we're stuffing donuts in our face. It does not work. It doesn't work. And we really are. We're eating ourselves into an early grave. If we can radically transform our lifestyle choices, then we, we can make a difference. And with that, we can begin thriving instead of just barely making it and get ourselves going into that next level with our health and with our life. And that's what it's about. We want to help the next generation and we have to so as kids parents grandparents whatever stage you're in make a difference with your health and teach others because getting doing the basics getting the salt too much salt out of your diet cutting out the sugar cutting out the processed foods and the trans fats all these basic principles that we talk about if you'll do that a little bit at a time it'll make a difference it's like putting money into a health account and watching it grow compound interest just like you would with your stocks with your IRAs with your with your mutual funds and your your savings and whatever you do with your finances it's the same thing it's think of it your bank account like your health account like a bank account same thing so it's the choices we make every single day that will determine the kind of health that we're going to have and on this show we want to help you make good choices 888-283-7272 that's 888-283-7272 if you haven't found a lifestyle provider check out the website or call the number you can help find one in your area someone that believes the same way we do and then can help you go to the next level with your health and with your life let's go to the phones and talk with fran hi fran i'm 80 years old and uh, i've got this copd I can't hardly breathe at times. I'm on a uh, breathing machine. I would like to know what I could do to help myself. Well, darling, I know that can be tough, and COPD is not easy, that's for sure. really have to step back and, and look at your overall lifestyle choices. That matters more than just about anything. So at this point... Your doctors have probably told you to eat healthy and and do that sort of thing. But what does that really mean? It means making better choices. So going in and eating each day and balancing out your meals, equal amounts of lean protein sources like chicken, fish, beef, or eggs, low glycemic carbohydrates in the form of fruits and vegetables, and then good healthy fats, your almonds, your walnuts, your cashews, your avocados. Eating those kind of foods in balance will help lower the inflammation. And once you do that, it can make a tremendous difference. Now, along with supplements, which a lot of people want to know about, there are some really good ones out there that help to cut down the inflammation and also be supportive to the body in a multitude of ways. Vitamin D is important to make sure the numbers are where they need to be so you can get some blood testing done with your physician. Make sure they get the numbers up in the higher end of the range between about 60 and 70. 
that will serve you very well. The other is to make sure you look, there's a product called Amino Active. And we talk about it here on the show, but Amino Active is a, is a powerful anti-inflammatory and it's very supportive. It's really good. It's made from amino acids, which are proteins and it's got some homeopathics in it. It's completely natural. It's very safe Been tested over and over again. And it's just, people get fantastic results with it. You can go to aminoactive.com to check that out and get more information about it. But it's, it's a great component to be able to cut down the inflammation in the body and don't forget fish oil. So your basic fish oil, cod liver oil, one of my favorites, giving the body what it needs to be able to be supported is one of the, one of the best tools that you can use to really do that. So I would check out, of course, our website, you can get more information there that can help you along the way. But COPD, not easy, right? But it's something that we get challenged with at times. And you want to do everything you can along with what they're doing medically to give you support with your breathing to be able to support the body internally. Because a lot of times the inflammation that can rise in the body can cause breathing issues. And so you want to do everything you can nutritionally to support the body as well. 888-283-7272. That's 888-283-7272. Lines are open. Give us a call or go to the website. Coming up, we've got some more information to empower your health. I've got some research you don't want to miss. And I see you waiting on the phones there. We're going to get to you when we come back. Don't go anywhere. Hi, it's Asa. I'm giving you a copy of my best-selling book for free to help you in your health journey today. I'll pay for the book. All you do is just cover the small shipping and handling costs. Go to AsaRx.com and get your free book today. To find out more, visit the show online, InShapeNetwork.com. Go to the website. You know, food is powerful, and it can become our best medicine in so many ways. So food either brings health to the body or it can take health out of the body. So many different things that food can do, and that's why I like talking about it, because it can really transition our health in a great and powerful way. And so what I want to talk about is rhubarb. You're thinking, rhubarb? Who would even think to eat that? Well, it's powerful, and if you've never thought about eating it, it actually tastes really good. It's in the same family as kale or spinach. So it's it's a lettuce in that same family. But it's one of the least calorie vegetables. About 100 grams of, of the fresh leaves can provide about 21 calories, but it's got amazing phytonutrients, dietary fiber, antioxidants, minerals, and vitamins that can really pack a powerful punch. Matter of fact, the stalks are rich in vitamin B complex, such as folates, riboflavin, niacin, and vitamin B6, and also vitamin B5, which is great for the adrenal glands. The red color in the stalks contain a lot of the vitamin A. So these compounds have strong antioxidants to be able to support the body and help it fight, even to protect the eyesight. And again, a lot of uh, again against a lot of the oral cavity type cancers. Now, being in the same family with rhubarb in is kale and spinach. It provides a good amount of vitamin K. And there's usually, of course, vitamin K is important to help bone formation and strengthening the bone. So if you have osteopenia or osteoporosis, the vitamin K goes in and makes a great absorption compound for vitamin D and all the other minerals. So they combine together and and create great bone density. So it's a great way to be able to support the bone health and structure and be able to do that. Vitamin K is essential. And we're learning that if you don't get enough vitamin K, then you can create some pretty serious issues as far as calcification inside the heart and the arteries. So if you're getting plenty of vitamin D, that's going to absorb more calcium, and that's great. We like that. But if you get an over-calcification, you don't get enough vitamin K, then it can cause issues and create some some issues as far as decreasing the, the pliability of the vessels. So just be careful with that. And also, most of the minerals don't absorb into the body, and they're subject to chelating into insoluble complexes by oxalic acid 
So you can, you know, have some, some issues getting rid of minerals excessively as well. So just something to think about, definitely. But it's a great food to add in. Cut it up, make it into a salad, or add it into your salads on a regular basis. Put it into smoothies. You can do that as well. A lot of great way of putting that into smoothies and helping the shakes. That helps tremendously. 888-283-7272. That's 888-283-7272. Lines are open with questions about your health. Give us a call. Go to the website. Go to teamlifestyle.com. Let's go to Mark on the phones. Hi, Mark. I have a question about the garlic. Does elephant garlic or any of the varieties of garlic have the same benefits, or is it uh, certain specific uh, strains of the garlic? That's a great question. Most of the time, it's it's the garlic that you just find. I mean, any most garlic is going to have the same properties and same benefits to the body. Great for lowering blood pressure and being supportive in that way. Strong antioxidant to be able to help against many cancers, stomach cancer specifically. It's just a great tool to be able to add into your diet on a regular basis to be able to help. So garlic, I mean, no matter what the source is or what type it is, is pretty much going to give you uh, a great benefit for the most part. Triple eight two eight three seven two seven two. Give us a call. Candy in Gulf Shores, Alabama. Now, I know it's not really a disease or anything, but I have uh, custody of my five year old son, and he is struggling a lot with uh, his dad and I not being together. And I'm wondering what we can do to increase his emotional health and to be able to help him in the transition. You know, one of the big things you can do, of course, is time spent together, right? Love is spelt in time. So by spending quality time together, that can make a big difference with him, encouraging each other uh, when you're around together, not creating division any more than there already is, is very important too. But that's a big key. And then counseling, even at that age, is very, very helpful. So having someone to talk to and to help will make a big difference as well. So I would definitely get in with uh, maybe a pastor or a child psychologist, someone like that that can walk through some of the issues of, of the separation so that way that they get, he has more of a stability going through that and, of course, can create better emotional stability as well. 888-283-7272. That's 888-283-7272. Lines are open with questions about your health. You can give us a call or Go to the website. Moldy homes, they're saying, may mean more asthma in young kids. So children appear more likely to develop asthma if their living rooms or kitchens or bedrooms have mold or moisture or damage in them. The children with most susceptible to developing asthma and the most significant findings with the moisture damage, they said, with or without mold in the rooms where children expected to spend most of the time associated with increased asthma risk. There's a senior researcher at the Finland National Institute for Health and Welfare. In other words, children's asthma continued through age six and was visible with a lot of the mold changes that they had. The findings were published online recently in the Journal of Pediatrics. And for the study, they, they had several people, of course, involved in the study. Researchers found they tested blood samples at age one to six, to determine if they had allergies to various environmental substances on foods. So the risk of asthma, they said, in this study was really important because if the child found it difficult to control their asthma symptoms, then they really found that a lot of the triggers came down to foods and environmental factors, whether it was chemicals or anything like that, they really had some challenges that they had to look at. So... One of the big keys that you have to look at is monitoring the, the foods. And if you monitor the foods with the kids, that can make a big difference as well. And one of the, again, wheat products, bread, pasta, cereal, crackers, that sort of thing, that's important uh, to eliminate from the diet for a period of time because it can really stir up a lot of the food allergies and also the milk products, bread, pasta, cereal, crackers, uh, these sorts of foods can really help make a, a, a big difference along the way. So I would encourage you to go that way, especially if you're dealing with, with any type of issue with a potential asthma. Okay, let's go to the phones and talk to Jimmy. Hi, Jimmy. I'm a middle-aged male, age 50, in great health, with no chronic illnesses whatsoever. Um, but I suffer from gout, 
and uh, I, I eat right. I read the literature and stay away from all of those gout, high purine foods, but just can't beat it. And I'm looking for some help. Gout's a tough one. And I'll tell you that one of the things with gout that we have to look at on a regular basis is you have to look at the body's ability to break down protein. So the uric acid is a big issue with gout, and that's the main reason. So a lot of times we just take the medication and avoid the foods. And the reason for that is it pretty much it, it, it's, it's a Band-Aid. So you eliminate the foods, the body settles down, the medication eases the pain, eases the inflammation, and then gets you to a point where you really, I guess, I guess the best way to put it is you, you mask it till it goes down, and then you start eating the dietary foods, and later they come back. So you've got to get to a place where you can manage everything and you can get in and and start getting the body to break down. Now, hydrochloric acid is a real good way to do that. First, you've got to clear out the inflammation, though. So you've got to find out what nutritional deficiencies are probably at the root cause of that first, and then you can begin to build a good strategy from there. But just some basics to understand, digestive enzymes, hydrochloric acid, those are very helpful. And a way to raise hydrochloric acid in the stomach Certain foods can do that, but also apple cider vinegar or even balsamic vinegar can go in and raise the hydrochloric acid levels in the stomach to help you break proteins down at a much higher level. So you want to focus in on that and get to that route first by using the right kind of food. So, for example, if you eat a meal, you could take a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar with a meal. That's going to create more hydrochloric acid and get in to help you break the proteins down a lot better, which will cut down on the formation of those uric acid crystals. And so when you start putting all that together, that's what makes a big difference. And it really does create a system that helps, and it helps to build and support the body in a great way. And with gout, of course, being so inflammatory into the joints, once you cut down on the uric acid crystals, it really cuts down overall within the system. So that's one area that I would encourage you for sure to look at. If you get the digestion working right, the gout typically will resolve, but it has to be done in the right way and you have to eat the right kind of foods. That makes the biggest difference. Triple eight two eight three seven two seven two. That's triple eight two eight three seventy two seventy two. Lines are open. You can give us a call or go to the website, go to teamlifestyle.com. Now if you haven't found a lifestyle provider, someone in your area that believes the same way we do nutrition and lifestyle based care that we talk about look for our lifestyle providers you can find information about them at the website and of course they'll take you by the hand and help you get from where you are in your current state of health to where you need to be that's an absolute key we're here for you no matter what it is and also our new app is out go to the app store ipad and iphone the app is called on call radio you can listen to the show from the day before if you miss something you can always catch it until we go live the next day. So great little tips, tricks, and tools to help you reach your health goals to be able to go to that next level with your health and with your life. Coming up, I'll jump in with more questions about your health, and I've got some social media questions that you don't want to miss. Want to turn back the clock 15 years and have more energy? This is Dr. Asa telling you to just breathe with LiveO2. LiveO2 delivers the right amount of oxygen we need for optimal health. Go to LiveO2.com. That's LiveO2.com. Connect with On Call Radio and watch On Call TV at InShapeNetwork.com. are open give us a call or go to the website now karen in charleston south carolina love charleston great town i've come to kiowa island that's where i go quite a bit golf resort you'll probably hear me there sometime soon and karen in charleston says my husband 
has really bad dandruff. What can he do to help? He's tried those shampoos. They don't seem to work. Well, that's because a lot of skin conditions, including dandruff, come from the inside out. So we a lot of times we'll focus on what can we do from the outside in or the yeah, the outside in by using the different lotions and potions and creams and shampoos, thinking that that will take care of it. Remember, those conditions didn't just start. They came from the inside out, and that's what you have to focus on to be able to build and clean the the system out. So if you start in the gut and look at the gut health, that's what makes the biggest difference. So if you focus on getting the right kind of probiotics, the healthy bacteria in the gut, and that will start supporting the skin. Also, omega-3 fatty acid deficiencies are extremely important. So getting the fatty acids up and balanced will make a big difference. So cod liver oil, of course, is my favorite. Krill oil, salmon oil, they all work great, but they can make a big difference in your overall health. So I would encourage you to go that direction too, to get the right amount and that can make a big difference. So when you're looking at that, just make sure you tackle it from the inside out and Make sure you're eating the right kind of foods, too, because if he's eating a lot of foods that create inflammation and can create an allergic response, like, for example, if he's if he has a a sensitivity to gluten, then that can create some issues that can cause this to happen within the scalp, cause the excessive flaking and the like. All right. Triple eight, two, eight, three, seven, two, seven, two. That's triple eight, two, eight, three, seventy two, seventy two lines are open with questions about your health. Give us a call. Or go to the website and go to teamlifestyle.com. That's what we're here for. Heart attack death rates have unchanged, they're saying, despite faster treatment. So even though heart attack patients are getting faster treatment in the U.S., the death rates remain relatively unchanged. Over a four-year period, researchers have found that the average time when a heart attack patient entered a hospital and underwent angioplasty, a procedure which is a procedure to reopen the blood vessels, the time frame has not changed at all. So even though our techniques have gotten better, ambulance time has become better all of that we're still not moving as quickly and we're not doing everything as quickly as we can dr kirk garrett who's the director of the interventional cardiovascular research at lennox hill hospital in new york city he says going much faster would be hard to do and by skipping the emergency room we can shave another 20 minutes off the door to balloon time but we don't have any evidence that this will really save any more lives because the time is about the same so what they call door to balloon time gets a lot of attention, but it's probably just one small part of the bigger picture. By focusing on door to balloon time, they said we're about missing out on, we're not going to miss out on these key opportunities that need to be looked at. So it's important, but the the interesting part is what are we doing to prevent a heart attack on the front end anyway? I mean, what are we doing to change diet, lifestyle, and make radical changes all the way around to make these, these impacts? in our overall health. I mean, that is first and foremost what needs to be done more than just about anything else, in my opinion. 888 Lines are open. You can give us a call or go to the website. Go to teamlifestyle.com. If you haven't found a lifestyle provider in your area, make sure to check out the website. We've got team members that are growing all around the country that can help you empower your health and empower your life no matter where you are and what's going on with your health. Let's go to the phones and talk with Sarah. Hi, Sarah calling because I'm having some severe itching all over my legs, my arms, my back. I don't have any bed bugs. I've bought new bed. I don't have a liver problem. I cannot figure this out. It's driving me insane. I've tried every single oil, lotion, and I eat well. I eat vitamins and I eat, I take vitamins. I also take a eat my fruits and vegetables. I don't eat a lot of actually greasy fried foods. I seriously need help with this problem. My doctors cannot figure it out. Well, the fried foods themselves, there, there's a couple of challenges with it. And the fried foods, obviously, you want to stay away from. Those are not good. But you also want to, to make sure you cut out any of the inflammatory-based foods. Itchy skin, a lot of times, remember, the skin has the root in the digestive system for the most part. If you clear the digestive system, then you can begin to clear the skin in a great way. So what you want to focus on is you want to focus on first using anything you can, first of all, to eliminate any of the allergenic foods. Cutting those out is first and foremost. Then you've got to look at getting the right amount of probiotics 
which will put the good bacteria back in the digestive tract, enzymes that can help break the foods down effectively, and then also making sure that you get enough of the omega-3 fatty acids. We just don't get those in our foods. It's something that more than just a piece of fish once a week. I mean, we need a lot more than that to get the omega-3s. Itchy skin, a lot of times, is a histamine response in the body. So remember, histamine is the body's inability to break down proteins very well. And the more we, the more that happens, the more we throw off this histamine. And that's one area that we really have to look into and, and be cautious with. So to be careful throwing off the histamine is a big piece for this. All right. So cautious on the foods. Make sure you get equal amounts of lean protein sources like chicken, fish, beef, or eggs, low glycemic carbohydrates in the form of fruits and vegetables, and then of course, your good healthy fats, your almonds, your walnuts, your cashews, your avocados, all of that's great and all of it's important, but making sure that you get enough of it is the key. And then you can use the digestive enzymes, hydrochloric acid to break the proteins down and that'll cut down on that overall histamine response. Puts another hour in the charts. I want to thank our producer engineer, John Garrison and the rest of the team. Go tell one person something you learned on the show together. We can transform the health of our friends, our families, and our communities. You're listening to the show that helps you get well, stay well, and live well. Or we're diagnosing hope one person at a time. Did you know you can listen to the Asa RX audio experience on Spotify and Pandora? For all the ways to watch and listen, Check out our show page at asarx.com slash experience. Hi, it's Asa. I'm giving you a copy of my best-selling book for free to help you in your health journey today. I'll pay for the book. All you do is just cover the small shipping and handling costs. Go to asarx.com and get your free book today. This episode is over, but check episode notes for links to products and services you've heard about on this episode. Thanks for listening and subscribing. Please share the ASA RX audio experience with others and stay in touch by giving us your comment or review.